weekly digest of the biggest market stories from the past week. Join host Anna Sarin and financial expert Bruce Campbell as they go beyond the headlines to deliver cutting-edge insights into news that move the market. Proudly presented by the Canadian Securities Exchange. Hi, my name's Anna Sarin, and I'm Director of Listings Development with the Canadian Securities Exchange. You're joining us here for yet another market recap on Friday, September 16th, 2022. I'm, of course, joined by my wonderful co-host, Bruce Campbell, with Stonecastle Investment Management. Thank you for joining me, Bruce. Yeah, it's been quite a week, that's for sure. It's been a big week, Bruce, um, and I'm very thankful that you're joining us on Friday. I'm sure that... Uh, your office is very busy. So thank you for giving us some time to explain what happened in the markets. Uh, we're going to talk about the what most people are probably talking about is the CPI data um, uh, data that was released on Tuesday and what that did to the markets. Um, I think there were some, pr- some surprises there. We're going to talk about the Fed meeting that will be happening next week, what we can expect and what we think that might do to the markets. Uh, we're going to talk about FedEx. It had a rough day. Um, I think it all kind of started today. We're going to talk about why that happened. Um, and then, of course, we're going to get into some CSE issuer news. So um, first of all, on Tuesday... Um, For those of you that maybe don't know, um, on Tuesday, there was a release of CPI data. CPI data uh, is typically a benchmark for um, inflation, right, Bruce? That's right. Yeah, it was the U.S. uh, inflation number for August. And and just to tell me if I'm wrong here, but I believe what they do is they actually remove um, they remove gas prices and uh, they also remove another one. Is it? food prices because they're yeah so there's two different measures there's there's the overall cpi and then there's the core cpi which removes those yes and and that just to create a bit more stable so from my understanding it rose 8.3 percent which is a lot more than perhaps the market expected because the market as we know the fed has been working very very hard at reducing inflation by continuously raising rates. So I don't think that this was necessarily expected, correct? Yeah, it certainly took the market by surprise. If you look, go back to July, the July number, it was, uh, it was down from, from the previous month, it was uh, 8.2 on an annualized basis. And the expectation was, uh, I think if you actually looked at the consensus economists numbers, it was uh, 8.0, but a lot of people were thinking it would come in, you know, kind of 8.1 on an annualized basis. So down 0.1%. Instead, it came in at 8.3, which was an increase from July. And that was a huge surprise. There wasn't uh, too many economists that were expecting it to be higher. Most people thought that, you know, because energy was down that, you know, you were going to see a follow through in a number of other areas. And uh, we didn't see that. So, you know, food prices, food at home and, and, and restaurant foods were up, you know, travel was up, uh, new car prices were up, rents were up, uh, you know, all, all sort of the big factors were all up. And so uh, market did not appreciate that at all. It, it, you know, everyone sort of thought, well, hey, maybe the Fed was getting close to the point where, you know, they would do another rate hike and then, you know, kind of just sit back and wait and see what the data looked like if it was going in the right direction. Well, this meant that you know that that uh, speech that that uh, jerome powell gave in jackson hole really kicked in and we saw a horrible day on the markets the u.s markets were off uh you know in the four percent range uh for the nasdaq or the five percent range for the nasdaq and four percent for the s p which was one of the bigger days and we haven't seen a day that big going back to uh march of 2020 right in the in the pandemic so it was uh yeah very significant there was pretty much nowhere to hide uh, there wasn't too many sectors. There was very few stocks that were up, like looking at the TSX. Uh, there's, I think there's a 237 stocks in the TSX and there was, uh, I think eight or nine that were up on the day. Yeah, it, it was a tough day. And look, I mean, I think, I think for one thing, and, and we'll probably talk about this next week if we, if we don't touch on it today is the sentiment, right? I mean, this is really core shaking for investors um, because it's scary, right? I mean, we didn't, we didn't expect this to happen. We don't know um, if kind of the interest rate rise will, will help at this point. It was, you know, supposed to do that. So um, I guess the next thing we're going to touch on is the, um, is the Fed meeting next week. So what what do you think is going to come from that meeting at this point? Do you think they're scrambling right now or is it business <laughs> as usual? It's hard to say. I mean, they obviously have more data than any of the rest of us do. And so, you know, they'll they'll be taking a look at some of the leading indicators to try to figure out. And the consensus was that, you know, if you go back to uh, Monday, the consensus was, oh, you know, they'll probably do 50 basis point raise, but 75 they could possibly do. Well, now I think there's the consensus is that 
75 is pretty much done. And there's a possibility they could do 100 basis points. Sometimes I think that if they did 100 basis points, you know, maybe that calms the market a little bit because all along they've talked about the fact that the Fed's behind the curve, behind the curve. And now, you know, maybe that 100 gets them up. But I mean, this will be one of those times when the psychology of the markets really comes into play. If they do 75, is that going to be enough? And the market says, oh, yeah, that's great, you know, onward and upward. Or if they do 75, do they go, whoa, you guys are way behind the curve. It's going to go the other way. And if they do 100, the same thing. Oh, great. They did 100. Like, they, they're they on top of this. Like, away we go. Or is it like, what do they know that we don't know they did 100? You know, well, I jump, right? Go yeah. Down. Well, so. and, yeah, I think you touch on a good point is, uh, so I guess, I guess the big question for everyone is, what is the threshold that uh, interest rates need to get? to start staving off, you know, inflation, right? And it kind of feels like a custody divorce in the middle is the equity market. Is that is that a good way to explain it? A little bit. I mean, keep in mind that there's there's a real lag effect to interest rates. We this has been one of the fastest int interest rate increases in history. That being said, you know, we haven't had a long time for those to trickle their way through the economy and have an impact. And um, at some point in time they will, and so that's what I think that's kind of, you know, what the markets also shifted to be is if you go sort of the first quarter and probably most of the second quarter, the market was really concerned about interest rates and where they were going. And now I think the concern is that, yeah, we're still seeing this high inflation and, you know, kind of in the back of everyone's mind is like, how long could this be? Like, will we be able to tackle this inflation? One. And two is uh, the fact that you know, is the Fed tightening into a slowdown in the economy, which would be really bad because, you know, typically as the economy starts to slow down, they recognize it. That's when they actually lower rates. But this time they can't because oh. they have to control inflation. So it's that's terrifying. <laughs> yeah, that's and that's why, you know, markets and investors are just like, you know, just get me out, like, you know, sell. That being said, you know, when I say just get me out and sell, we haven't seen capitulation panic you know the way that most people measure that is the vix uh volatility index and it's been pretty moderate here we haven't seen capitulation if you think back to you know 2020 when everyone was just like get me out it was in the 60s and it's in you know kind of it hasn't even touched 30 it's been in the high 20s low like maybe okay. got to 30 this time around so it's really not showing you that you know i'm gonna puke get me out sell everything it's just kind of like do 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 slowly down and people are kind of orderly like okay yeah i'm gonna sell today oh yeah it doesn't look good i'm gonna sell today so yeah it's uh it's very fascinating we've had a rough few years maybe our our, our skin is a little thicker than it used to be yeah exactly <laughs> um well that's really interesting what you said i'm just gonna i'm just gonna reiterate that because i think that's a really big takeaway from today's talk um if they increase rates to the point where it creates a slowdown in um in the economy Typically, the result of um, dealing with the slowdown in the economy is by uh, lowering interest rates, which they're not able to do currently because of the incredible inflation. Did I say that right? That's right. Yeah. Okay. So and that's, um, and that's a big concern, right? That's a big concern. That's a big concern. Um, you know, and I think I think this is maybe one thing that um, as far as what's going on globally in the economy or even nationally or, you know, across the border, sometimes that's difficult for us um, as investors, as regular investors to understand. But I think people really are understanding this because they're feeling it every time they go and fill their gas tank and every time they go buy their groceries. Right. I think this is something that we probably feel closer to home than than any other kind of shift um, that, you know, what you and I might might typically talk about. Um, yeah, sure. So uh, what day is the meeting next week? It's on the 22nd. It's on the 22nd. Yep. Um, and do you think that there could be a shift either way? Do you think that maybe that was the reaction and it'll be kind of business going forward? What's your crystal ball say? Yeah, our crystal ball is a little foggy here. So it's going to be, it'd be really interesting. Like I said, it's going to be pure psychology and you know, how people perceive it and whether or not it's good news or bad news and, It'll be really fascinating to watch. That's for sure. Absolutely. Okay. Well, we'll talk about that next week. Um, we're going to talk about FedEx. So FedEx, uh, this happened today, not having a great day. So FedEx had its biggest drop in over 40 years um, since 1980. It, uh, it had low earnings and uh, the company is going to take immediate action. It's parking some of its aircraft, cutting 
worker hours and closing more than 90 of its 2,200 FedEx offices. Uh, when I checked earlier, the stock had crumbled 22%. I don't know where it's at right now. I'm not sure if you've been paying attention. Um, what happened? Yeah. So, I mean, they reported last night and as you mentioned, um, their numbers were down from where they expected, but sort of worse off is that they cut their guidance going forward. And then um, there was an interview with uh, the CEO of FedEx and he was asked whether or not, you know, we were heading into a global recession. And he basically said, yeah, we are, we're, we're, we're there. And I mean, that's what they see. They, if you remember back in 2009, after we came through the great financial crisis, it was really FedEx uh, reporting their earnings in, in, on, I believe it was March 9th, or maybe it was the 8th that they reported in, and the 9th was the next trading day where they said, Hey, you know what? Next quarter, our earnings are going to be higher. Like we see, you know, things have troughed and we're headed higher. That was what turned the market upside. And today it seems like that's what's turning the market to the downside. Yeah, it's a little scary. And, and you know, I think it's especially scary for, um, I think it's scary for investors when we hear the big names like FedEx have these kind of issues. I mean, it wasn't that long ago we were talking about what was going on with Walmart. Uh, General Electric, Electric has come out and said that they they're feeling the pressure. Um, McDonald's has come out and said that they're feeling the pressure. These are these are massive massive institutions that are coming out and saying, uh, you know, we might be in this for a moment and we might be feeling the same squeeze that these other big guys are feeling. So I think that really has a trickle down effect, don't you think? Yeah, and that's what the market is worried about, right? Is that you know this is is this the tip of 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 this earnings slowdown and the normal response that we would have from the Fed is, oh, okay, well, we can start easing up, we can, you know, lower interest rates, we can put some money into the economy. And now they have to actually do the opposite of that, because they're trying to control inflation. So they want to have that soft landing, as they refer to, so the economy doesn't go too far down. But instead, it looks like it's, you know, kind of heading right off the cliff here and yeah. the fed can't really do anything about it because they're worried about controlling inflation and they've been such hard line on that. Crazy, crazy times, Bruce. Um, I'm sure you are particularly happy that it's Friday. I am particularly happy. It's Friday. <laughs> um, okay. We are going to get into some CSC issuer news. So first of all, I just wanted to mention, um, amongst all of this mayhem, um, the CSC team is just absolutely thrilled. We're back on the road. I mean, some of our team, you know, has been on the road for a while now, but we're officially back at it. Uh, the fall is always a big time for us to be traveling. We had a bunch of our team out at the Benzinga conference in Chicago. Apparently it was a huge success. Um, tons of people there, lots of business being done. It shows that uh, the cannabis space is has not gone anywhere. Uh, maybe it's taking a mild nap and things are happening behind this behind the screen, but uh, that it's still very much there. So um, they were busy at that. I personally went down to the um, Precious and Metal Summit that was held in Beaver Creek. Um, this was a really impressive summit. It's the first time I've been uh, incredibly impressed with the organizers and um, and got to meet um, some CSC issuers that were there, um, as well as just the incredible bankers that were there. Now, um, just to keep in mind, I was there on Tuesday uh, when this all happened. And you know what I have to say? The sentiment didn't change that much. I think everyone was a little afraid to pull up their own personal portfolios, uh, but there were still deals being done and there was still money being raised. The mining sector does seem to be holding on. Do you, do you think I'm right there? Yeah, it looks like it. And, you know, coming out of this recession, if we're heading into a recession, this pullback in the markets, that's one sector that could potentially do very well. The Canadian or the US dollar has been so strong through all this year. And, um, and that's had an impact on, you know, metals prices. And at the same time, their input costs have, um, have been cut, you know, a lot of them use, um, use, use uh, diesel as, uh, you know, a big byproduct to, to do, um, to pr produce their, their metals and products. And so as a result, if you were to see, you know, a moderate moderation in the commodity uh, prices that they use, and then you saw an increase in the commodity prices that they sell, it could potentially be quite a boom for, for that sector. So, you know, we're trying to look out, you know, kind of past the valley into what the next opportunity is. And, you know, that's one that we certainly can, you know, paint a very interesting picture on why we could see, you know, a big move into that sector again. 
And listen, that's really important for us Canadians. I mean, whether it's companies that are based globally that are, um, you know, listed in Canadian markets and raising capital in Canadian markets, or if it's just um, exploration and mining activity happening uh, within our borders, the mining sector is very important to us as a country. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting one of our newest issuers, Relevant Gold Corp. They listed with us in August of 2022. So they've only been listed with us just over a month. Um, they were a really neat group, really like them. They're based out of Wyoming. Um, and, and this just proves, I think where, you know, the mining sector still has some major legs to it. They were able to raise over $5 million, um, prior to going public. They did a non-offering prospectus. This is something we've seen a lot of over the past few years. For those that don't understand an IPO is when you raise capital at the time of going public, a non-offering is when you have enough capital already in your treasury and you have enough shareholders that you can just do the non-offering and go public without that as um, hand in hand. So they were able to raise money privately and get their distribution and go public. Um, and they're quite interesting group. So a lot of the money or a lot of their thesis is based around kind of this data. And this is something that I think we're going to start seeing more and more of is the fact that we have, you know, this technology and data that continues to grow and evolve. Um, within the mining sector, um, their thesis essentially is, um, and I'm going to try and say this correctly, that uh, 2.65 billion years ago, there was a tectonic drifting um, and that Wyoming is positioned, um, you know, kind of on this tectonic, tectonic shifting that used to be attached to the Abitibi um, gold belt, which um, as uh, most people know, is a very rich belt in Canada. It's produced over 100 mines and 170 million ounces of gold since 1901. Um, so if their theory is correct, um, you know, it could be it could be huge for Wyoming and for their property. Um, the one thing they said when I sat down and chatted with them is that they had the biggest trading day since they had been a public company um, while they were up there. So it's just a reminder, you know, for those issuers that are out there doing these, um, doing these roadshows and getting out in front of investors, you know, there is some real value in it. Um, and, and when you have, you know, such great thesis and great technical team, it really makes a big difference. So congratulations to them. Um, they are currently actively drilling. They're a great team, incredible background, um, all the people involved. So congratulations again to them. Um, Bruce, what should we think about going into next week? Other than Well, the big thing is going to be the Fed. Everyone's going to be waiting and watching that. And then beyond that, there's, you know, a number of different kind of technical levels that, you know, the market is the markets, the overall markets are at and, you know, everyone's watching those levels and of course paying attention to, you know, is support, is it resistance and, you know, the, the sort of back and forth of, of, uh, of the markets and emotional mindset. Emotional mindset. Well, listen, I hope you have um, good emotional mindset this weekend. Get some rest. Thank you. <laughs> Hug your family. Um, and we'll be back at it next week. Thank you again so much, Bruce, for your time. Have a wonderful weekend. Yeah, same to you.